lust. Uh Uh-oh. We're not going to talk about that, are we? Yep. We're going to look into why it's one of the most dangerous sins we can commit. That and more on today's episode. Hi, folks. How do you do? Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. (laughs) Yes, even with sound effects. And we do this using true life stories of real people. I'm Timothy Gregory, and I've got a question for you. In your heart of hearts, do you justify or downplay the seriousness of sexual lust? Or does it obsess you? Does it preoccupy you? Maybe you understand that you truly cannot escape the reality of this sin unless Well, unless you become a hermit in a cave, isolated from society. But probably not even then. We're going to explore those questions and more in this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Love surfeits not. Lust, like a glutton, dies. Love is all truth. Lust, full of forged lies. A guy named William Shakespeare wrote that. You may have heard of him. Word is that, uh, well, he could turn a phrase. What exactly is he saying? Love doesn't gorge, but lust, like a glutton, dies. Love is all truth. Lust is deceptive and created fraudulently. Well, those are powerful words, aren't they? Lust has as its focus pleasing oneself, and it often leads to unwholesome and even devastating actions, all to fulfill one's desires with, well, really no regard to the consequences. Just like Patrick Brighton in this week's episode. Also, folks, you want to stick around because later we are going to field a listener's question and give the rest of you an opportunity to enter our sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize that uh, you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. The true testimony of Patrick Brighton. Come on up. Cindy. Where is she? Where? She's not here. Do you have any idea what you're doing to the children and me? Please don't start. The children are so confused and miss you. I don't care. You need to come home. When are you coming home? I don't know. Patrick! I said I don't know. I miss you. I need time. Where is she? None of your business. I'd like to know who she is. (laughs) That will never happen. (sighs) Twelve years. Twelve years of marriage, three kids... And you don't think you owe me anything? Not an explanation or an ETA or nothing? Get out, would you? I I, I didn't invite you here. Get out. My dad was always tired after long days of installing tile. During family dinner, he would often stop eating and stare into space and eventually make his way to the couch to fall asleep. No one ever explained to my sister and me what was wrong with him. When I was about five years old, my father was fixing a bicycle for me and passed out. I didn't know what to do. Dad? Dad, wake up! Mom! Mom! Yes, honey, what is it? I I don't know what happened. We were just... He was putting on the wheel and now... What? He's dead! Daddy's dead! The man in our story let his lust and pride lead him down a dangerous path. This is the story of how he was turned around. The true story of Patrick Brighton, right now on Unshackled. My dad wasn't dead. He was epileptic. He suffered from several seizures a day. I was always scared and never understood why this was happening. I think my dad was searching for healing. He took several trips to Canada to visit a shrine, praying for a miracle. He read the Bible and occasionally took me to church. He never taught me anything about the Bible. 
At one point, he was hospitalized for depression. Despite my dad's struggles, I was the golden boy of the family. I made my first communion, and at age 12, I was confirmed in the church. I had no idea what it meant. In fact, immediately after my confirmation, I walked out of church and stole some candy at a local store. My partner in crime those days was my cousin Jim. This is from our family. Thanks. My mom gave you 25 bucks. Seriously? That's very kind of Aunt Kathy. When do I get confirmation? You'll get confirmed next year, Jim, when you're 12. Do I have to wear that outfit? Shut up. I'll do it for cash. All right, boys. Let's take our seats in the pew. How you feeling, Patrick? Fine, I guess. Do you know what today is all about? Um, God? We have to go inside. Yeah, the cleric will explain it. Jim, look at that old man in the second row. His head is shaking like a bobblehead. Come on, boys. The music is starting. I learned later that the elderly man whose head was shaking had Parkinson's. Despite my dad's own health challenges, I hadn't developed much empathy by the time I became a teenager. It was at our school's weekly dance night called Teen Timers that I developed an interest in girls, specifically Darlene. Hey, Patrick. Today's headline? I missed you. <laughs> Come on in. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't that smooth. But my newspaper delivery route included Darlene's apartment. And because her mom worked, we started taking advantage of having the house to ourselves. I was only 14 years old when we started having sex. I got you something. What is it? <gasps> An elephant ring? I know that your favorite animal. Oh. I love it so much. Thank you. This was only the beginning of a dangerous pattern in my life. I grew into a passionate, jealous, temperamental teenager, which made those years very volatile. I would get into brawls or fistfights with people who even looked at me the wrong way. I got you a Coke. Okay. What's wrong? <laughs> You're really gonna act all innocent on me? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you really should. Patrick, there are other people in here. I'd love to hear what they think of my girlfriend who lets that baseball player walk her to every class. Shh. We're working on a project together. I don't want to hear it. Patrick. Let me see your ring. Will you, will you sit down? I bought it. Let me see it. If you're not ready to be serious, then don't wear this. You hear me? Don't wear it. I was tormented by jealousy. I threw the ring as far as I could throw it. But somehow, Darlene and I stuck out our relationship, even through our fights. And then, when I was 17 and Darlene was 16, we found ourselves way in over our heads. Please, will you tell Dad? I think you should be the one to tell He's him. He's gonna kill me, Mom. Please, don't make me. I'm freaking out. Hi, hon. Howdy. We got anything cold in the fridge? No AC in the house I was in. Man, that must have been rough. There's soda. What's going on? You both look like you've seen a ghost. Darlene is pregnant. Oh, Patrick. I'm really sorry. I... Yeah, you were a good kid. Now you're nothing but a dirty rat. I've never forgotten those words. It would have been less painful if he had thrown a fit or raged around the house like I expected him to. I wanted so badly to please my father. Darlene's parents came over to speak with mine and it was decided she would go to her aunt's house in Virginia to have the baby and the baby would be adopted. My first year in college, I visited her for the last time. How's it? How's it feel? Uh, how, how do you feel? Strange. Feeling it kicking stuff. Uh, I can't imagine. Do you think it's a boy or a girl? Mm, boy. Wow. What do you think? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I've been so far away, I don't really have a sense of it. Uh, uh, there's my cab. I'm glad you came. Yeah, me too. You'll keep me informed? Two months and he'll be here. Or she'll be here. It's exciting. For sure. I never met him. Our baby boy was adopted. 
I don't know what became of him, and I was filled with shame. I wondered, and still do, if he would heal from the wound of my abandonment. Darlene and I lost touch. In college, I met another girl, Cindy. We dated and then had one year of long distance after I graduated. Dear Patrick, I miss you terribly. I went to Sigma Chi the other night for a party, and I could only think of you and late night pizza. Their new pledge class is lame. Can't wait to see you at Christmas. I have a new card game to teach you. You will never beat me. Love, Cindy. Cindy, of course their new pledge class is lame. I wasn't there to help pick them. I hate the idea of you going to parties without me. You better not be talking to any guys. We only have a few more months of this, and then we will be back together. I submitted my application to Syracuse for a master's in college administration. Then we'll be in the same place. Get ready to lose at your new favorite card game. Love, Patrick. We were soon married. When I got a teaching job, I dropped out of the master's program and pursued a degree in elementary education where I thought I could better support us. We soon had our hands full. Cindy gave birth to three kids in four years. I continued to love teaching, but something in me was never satisfied. There was an emptiness in my heart that I tried to fill with music, sports, and women. I was very distracted by a new teacher named Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Hey there. <laughs> Just wanted to see how your first week went. Pretty good overall. I think I've only fallen for two of the lies the kids told me, and I made everyone laugh today by bringing in a cat video to talk about literary irony. <laughs> Huge success. <laughs> How's your week been? Good. I was just about to go grab a drink to unwind. Any interest in a little co-teacher happy hour? Hmm. There's a wine bar down the street. Sure, let's do it. And that was the first time I cheated on my wife. All right, we'll get back to Patrick's story in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org, and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, Unshackled. We take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now... Back to Patrick's story. My affair with Sandra didn't last long, but I still couldn't fill the hole in my heart. I knew there was something missing in my life. I started a second master's program, ironically, in marriage and counseling. I quickly became attracted to another woman in my program. I tried to hide our affair from my wife while she was busy raising our young kids without much help from me. But the more time I spent with this new woman, the more I wanted. And eventually, I decided to follow that desire right out into the daylight. Did you see that? I can go between my legs. I can too. Let me try. Okay. Guys, uh, give uh, Dad the ball for a second. I need to talk to you. Can you go between your legs, Dad? Yes. <laughs> Whoa! But I didn't bring you here to talk about basketball. Why are we at the park, then? Because I... I wanted to give your mom some space. What? I love you guys. I love you more than you know, and I always will, but I have... Daddy's leaving, Mommy. Uh, 
I'll be moving out of the house. It was a heart-wrenching conversation and one of the most difficult decisions I've ever made. My dad's words wouldn't stop ringing in my ear. Now you're nothing but a dirty rat. I moved into an apartment and stayed away for six months. I didn't see my kids often, and when my wife came to the apartment, I asked her to leave. When the woman I was with told me she was moving to Connecticut, I knew I had to make a decision regarding my marriage. I had to choose between my selfish desires and my family. I called my cousin Jim to come help me. What is this place? A uh, church. Oh, you go here? No, no, I'm counseling people here as part of my master's program. Oh, you look like you haven't left this basement all week. I don't know what to do. You're a social worker. Tell me what to do. Tell me which woman to choose. Well, you are married to one of these women. You have kids with one of these women. I don't want to go home, Jim. I, I don't want to go home. How come? It's not enough. When I'm with Paula, it's fun. It, it feels exciting. I, I feel like I'm getting what I need. What you need? What I want. Uh, okay. So what happens if you move to Connecticut with her? I, I don't think I can. Why not? I, I want to so badly, but something inside of me is saying, go home. Y you have to go home. You gotta listen to that voice. Don't you think? Uh, I don't want to. I know, but you can't trust what you want. And so I made the decision to go home with great reluctance. I didn't even ask my wife if it was okay. I just walked in the door and picked up where I left off. But I was not happy being home, and I made sure she knew that. Honey, are you coming? Mom made pot stickers. I'm not hungry. Dad, there's one for each of us. I said I'm not hungry. I called Dad's. This food's gonna get cold. Well, you could have checked with me before you got it all ready. This is too early for me to eat. This is when we have to eat to get the kids to bed on time. Then enjoy your meal. I'll be upstairs. After a few months of being at home, the phone rang one night at 1 a.m. It was my cousin Jim, and this time he was crying. I went to be with him. What is it? I've been reading my Bible, and I'm just... I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's... Wow, that's good. Uh, I didn't know you read the Bible. I do now. Uh, okay. And I'm just... Patrick, I feel like he's with me. Then why are you crying? Because it's so beautiful. He knows everything, everything I've ever done, and he's still with me. I'm forgiven. I can't believe it. Jim, I'm wondering if maybe we should swing by the hospital. Just to make sure everything's okay with you. Inside. Everything's fine. I, I just... <laughs> you're really... You're really kind of scaring me. I, I think it'd be good for them to observe you for the night. Patrick, it's just love. That's all it is. Unimaginable love. I spent three hours with him, and I couldn't talk him out of it. I didn't understand, but I was curious. If he has the Holy Spirit, I want it too. I went home and started reading a Bible we had. It made no sense to me. I made an appointment with the cleric at the parish my wife and kids attended. When I told him I wanted the Holy Spirit, he said I already had it since I was baptized as an infant. I didn't find what I was looking for. Not yet. All right. Here's a clean bucket for you. Oh, thank you. How are you feeling this morning? Mm, still pretty weak. Well, you haven't kept down solid food for three days. That's understandable. You've taken such good care of me. Oh, it's nothing. There's your tea. This is a special kind that's supposed to help with the flu. All right. Let it steep for a few minutes. I'll just set it down here. I don't know what it was about that cup of tea or being sick enough that my wife had to care for me this way, but emotion surged up inside of me, convicting me of the pain and hurt I had caused her. I was full of remorse and felt unworthy of grace. Cindy? Yeah? Please, 
Forgive me. I am so sorry for hurting you. I'm so very sorry for everything. For being unfaithful, for leaving you and the kids, for not visiting, for the way I treated you when you came to see me, for waltzing back in here and making you pay for it for 12 years of taking you for granted. Can you ever forgive me? I had never asked for forgiveness in my entire life. Not from my parents, not from Darlene, not from my kids. I wasn't sure how this worked. Would she ever possibly... I forgive you, Patrick. Are there any more powerful words in the world? Meanwhile, Jim was continuing on his faith journey, and he invited me to the church he was attending. I agreed to meet him there. It was a simple building. Didn't look like any church I had seen before, but when I saw the people singing, I knew they had something I was missing. Listen, friends, we have Bibles in the seat pocket in front of you, so take one home if you don't have one. Uh, don't take my word, take God's word. I see we have a number of visitors here tonight. And it's no coincidence you were here. Did you know that? Jesus Christ loves you, and he wants to save your soul and change your life. If you die tonight, will you spend eternity in heaven or hell? Hell. For sure, hell. If anyone wants to receive the free gift of salvation, come forward and pray. Someone in the congregation will help you pray. My feet were nailed to the floor but I looked over and a young man was coming down the aisle. Hey. Hi there. What do you think? Do you want your sins forgiven? I... I do, if possible. Well, why don't you join me up front? Just tell God what you're feeling. I want you to take over my life. Ask his forgiveness. I've done so much. Could you possibly forgive me, Lord? And now, believe. And allow him to welcome you home. The next day I went to the bank and I was waiting in line to make a transaction when I was overcome by this strong urge to cry. I started weeping. I had to leave the bank. I, I didn't know what was happening to me, but now I see Jesus was making himself manifest. I was coming into an awareness of his presence, and I felt, well, I felt kind of like my cousin Jim when I tried to send him to the hospital. My wife and kids started coming to church with me, but my kids were still figuring out what they wanted. Night, Em. Night, Dad. Can I pray with you? No, thank you. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to serve Jesus anymore. Where do you think that's coming from? I don't know. You have to separate yourself from sin, Em. Jesus is the only way. L let me grab my Bible. I want to go over some scripture with you. Dad, I don't want that. Can't you just respect what I'm saying? I... Can you turn off the light? I'm sleepy. Okay. We'll talk more about this tomorrow. But God spoke to me in the middle of the night. Let silver be silver, let gold be gold, and let rust be rust. He told me not to force the will of a human being. God wants us to choose to surrender our lives to him. Of all people, I should know that a reluctant return home is worthless if your heart's not behind it. My children are older now. They've left the Lord at various times, but God has restored them. That's his specialty. He restored my marriage, too. I have been faithful to Cindy since the day I surrendered my life to Jesus on February 19, 1982. For the past 38 years, God has graciously used me to help in several ministries of his local church. How can I help? 
Okay, the question is, how am I going to remember which present is for which grandchild? Oh, you didn't label them as you went along? That would have been smart, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, no, this is way more fun. <laughs> I'll take these seven. You take those six, and we'll just shake them and see if we can solve the mystery. How did we wind up with 13 grandchildren? <laughs> because our love is just that contagious. Merry Christmas Eve, Patrick. I've never been more in love with you, Cindy. That sounds like the board game. That's Darren's. One down. I think about the decision I made in that church to choose his will over mine. I think about how my life would be different if I'd followed my lust. If you are being unfaithful to your spouse, Know that God can save your marriage. Healing can happen. If you are an angry, jealous person, know that Jesus has the power to change you. And may we all know that someday, the physical desires that you try so hard to satisfy now will fade away. Choose what's eternal. Live for what lasts. I promise you, you won't regret it. Tough topic, but great message. And Patrick Brighton is now living a life of consistency and faithfulness. That's what God can do. What about you, friend? The sexual buzz of lust is only proper, only acceptable when it's grounded within a marriage relationship. Oh, but Timothy, it's so difficult. I know, hard to accept made even more difficult if you're in bondage to lust. We look for a way to justify our, our waywardly uh, pointed gratification of sexual desires, a way to convince ourselves that it's okay, it's natural, let them roam, but it's really not. Just like God showed us through Patrick, that with God's strength, it can be overcome. All right, now I have uh, here a question from a visitor of one of our live productions who asked, how do we determine our sound effects? Well, uh, I'll give you a little insight here to the process. Once the script is completed, one of our sound designers, uh, one of our sound effects guys, decides if a sound effect needs to be digital, a digital sound effect, or a live sound effect, which is one that they create there live in front of the microphone. Now, a digital sound effect is pulled from our already existing sound effect files, and they tend to be the more uh, complex sound effects that would be difficult uh, to produce live, like, um, you know, a crowded street or... Um, a war scene with lots of explosions and planes and tanks and that sort of thing. Whereas a live sound effect we can actually do during the recording of the show in front of the audience, which could be a, a door shutting or ice in a glass rattling around, that sort of thing. Now, uh, folks, if you have a question or comment for us here at Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, something you may be curious about or want to share with us, you can write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Before we get on to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can also share it or tell a friend. We'd love for you to review or rate our podcast. We appreciate your input and encouragement. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. Okay, here's the prize for our upcoming sweepstakes contest, a beautiful wooden scripture plaque. And I believe the scripture uh, on this particular plaque is... Hebrews 11.6, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And folks, this plaque is gorgeous, especially if you're looking for daily inspiration from Scripture. You will love this authentic and very unique 
wooden plaque. Um, it's been sawn from a tree branch or a log, and it looks like it. And, uh, and it's cut in such a way so as to keep as much of the bark around the perimeter as possible. It's been handcrafted around the natural character and beauty of the wood that, uh, well, that God created. So all you have to do to enter our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast sweepstakes drawing is call 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org. And give us your name, phone number, and email. The winner of this sweepstakes for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced on April 5th. But the deadline for entry is March 31st. And next time... So what was everyone's high low today? Um, my high was playing football at recess, and my low was we had a pop quiz in math. Oh, how did it go? I already asked her that when she got home. Well, I wasn't home yet, so I didn't get to hear about it. It went okay. Why <laughs> weren't you home, Francis? Still at work? Mom? Don't you think so, girls? The great Francis Walker, the lawyer everyone loves. You're so selfish. Dad? Mommy's sick. Don't listen to her. She's sick. As a child, Amelia Walker watched her parents numb the strains of life with alcohol and work. Is this a good idea that we're getting her more to drink? I don't know. You know what she's like without it. And you know what she's like with it. This is the story of her road to enlightenment. I guess I never really thought about what salvation means. The true story of Amelia Walker, coming soon on Unshackled. Heard in the true story of Patrick Brighton were Ed Dazalo, Caden Koshilev, Amanda Markeski, Howard Friedland, Mara Kate Burns, and Demetrius Troy. Original music and audio engineer Don Badorf. Sound effects Demetrius Troy. Recording engineer David Pierchinski. Script Samantha Beach. All right, that's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time unless our Lord returns before then. I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.